Happy Friday, everyone. Make sure we have volume. There it is. Yay! I am happy when it starts off with video and audio. That's a good sign. Oh, happy Friday. We made it another week. So, anybody have great plans for the weekend? I know um, tomorrow... I am going to be dog sitting my grand doggies. My son's working, so he didn't want to have to leave the kids home alone again for another day. So they're going to come and spend some time with Graham Graham. And then Sunday, <clears throat> give it another minute here in case people don't um, join right until 10 o'clock. Sunday, I think, is the very last event that I have that had been postponed or rescheduled due to the pandemic. So I'm meeting some of the girls that I used to work with and a couple of my other friends. And we have a fundraising designer purse bingo to go to. So that's exciting because I love purses. And we haven't seen, some of us haven't seen each other for quite a while. So I'm excited to hang out with those girls again and just relax for an afternoon. So where are we at? We have one more minute. Oh, let's see. Well, my stream is going good. I wanted to, um, I did play around with the lights again because Monday when I did my video, my camera was flickering a little bit. And I think that the new light that I have might be um, making heat on my desktop here that's making the camera go wonky because sometimes the cameras are heat sensitive and they just flicker a lot. So anyways, I closed one curtain in the room and I turned my one light around and hopefully today's uh, video will stream nice. So I'm making a shiny wreath today and my card is inspired and I hope I get her name right, Cecile Ribon. And if I mispronounced her name, I apologize deeply. This is another card that I had saved on one of my Pinterest boards. And it's from about five years ago. But I knew I wanted to make a wreath card today. And um, when I saw this one on my board, I was like, yeah, that's, that's what I'm looking to do. So this is perfect. I'm using scraps of metallic paper. If you don't have any of the foil metallic paper, you can still make this card with cardstock. So you can um, just cut, die cut all of your pieces from cardstock. And I also am using some heat embossing for my greeting. And if you don't have uh, embossing powders or a heat tool, you are, you know, more than welcome here to just ink and stamp. So don't let not having some of these products discourage you from making cards because they can easily be adapted to use the items that you have. So here is what I'm using today. And, and I'm going to prove that point to you as a matter of fact. Because when I when I saw the card on my Pinterest board and I knew that this was what I wanted to make, of course, I checked in the catalog to see what, um, what wreath dies or circular dies we had that I could use. And I don't have it. I don't have that set. There we go. Okay. So you have some numbers jotted there or a screenshot for chance. And so the set that's in the catalog is seasonal swirls. Well, I knew I wasn't going to be able to order this and get it for today, right? So but I knew I also wanted to make a wreath card. But then I knew I also had some other circular dies. So 
So I just dug around and I had, where did I put them? Swirly bird. There we go. I have a very old stamp set here called Swirly Bird and it has swirly scribble thighs. So this was very similar to the seasonal dies that I just showed you. I like I like this um, Stampin' die set. I use this quite often to make flags. I actually have um, cut a lot of the strips out and kept them because these make wonderful stripes on a white background. I'll show you to make flag cards. Isn't that great? Perfect. I think I've done a video or two on those, but they um, would make great invitations to like a Memorial Day picnic or any kind of barbecue. Happy Fourth of July. So I use this set quite often in the summer. So I knew I still had one with a circle and it even has a couple of smaller ones. This one is very similar to the seasonal die. But I think this is much smaller, and I wanted my wreath to be bigger today. So if you have the seasonal swirls, you're going to have the um, additional benefit of having some of those little pine leaves or stars or whichever one you choose. Mine is plain, but that's okay. I'm happy with that. So... I think when Cecile did hers, her card was made with maybe like a champagne color foil. I'm going to use copper. I have copper foil for my wreath. And I use silver foil for the little um, branches or stems. We're using basic gray for the card base or for the first panel. And... I used basic gray and basic white for the snowflakes, and I'm wishing I would have put those on dimensionals. So on today's card, I will pop those snowflakes up a little bit. I also heat embossed my greeting on the front. And if you were with me, I think it was last week, <clears throat> when I was trying to use my copper embossing powder, I was really having a problem with it. And so I didn't want to, um, I did re-ink my Versamark, but I didn't want to ruin another piece of cardstock, so I knew I had some. Um, this is actually made by Brutus Monroe, and it's called Golden Gourd. But it's sort of like an orangey gold, so it matches my copper foils just right. So I'm using my swirly die. Put my extra flag stripes over there. And... Uh, this is how, when I have leftover foil pieces, I just always put them into one of my um, extra solo bags here and keep them. So a project like this is great because I can pull out all these little pieces. And after I made the one that I had tried to do like Cecile's, I made another one using silver for the wreath and then I had some green metallic so I cut some leaves out of that and then I embossed I think this was like a gunmetal gray I have a lot of embossing powders that I've gotten from other kits or garage sales or whatever so I do try to use them up <clears throat> whenever I get a chance to heat emboss so let's get started with our card today Oh, this is the November shopping code. If you are shopping with me, please use the shopping code so that I know to send you a thank you and a little sample um, thank you gift inside of your card. And my November shopping specials are, oh, and I meant to print off. Oh, darn it. Uh, always forget something. I got the instructions right today. So um, during November, if you shop and spend $50 or more in product, you will get a package of real red braided trim. And $100 or more, you get the braided trim and a pack of genial gems. Now, I'm going to 
make this disclosure because of the cargo ships issue. Those are my intentions. If I'm not able to get the products that I'm showing you, I will replace them with something very similar that are equal to or more um, expensive than these items. I'm not going to let you lose out, but I have a lot of things sitting here because I bought them in advance and then I didn't use them all. And now I'm kind of stuck with a bunch of stuff because of our lovely pandemic issues that we had there for a while. I have, as a matter of fact, I have stamp sets that we never got to have workshops with that are brand new. I'm going to try to find a way to offer those to anyone that might be interested. Okay, so when you use your shopping code, I do send out thank yous. And then when you spend the 50 or $100, you get additional thank you gifts too. So I'm starting with a piece of basic white cardstock, which is an eight and a half by 11 that I have cut in half and scored again and folded to make a four and a quarter by a five and a half inch card base. And then I've taken a piece of basic gray, which is four and an eight by five and three eighths. This will be our card panel for the front. See, I still see those little stripes, but I don't see them on the video that's playing. Okay, maybe it's okay. And then I'm using a piece of copper foil. And I think I have some more scrappy still down in here. Yeah, this one had something stuck on it, so we had to go in the scrap bin. And use my little swirly. I'm going to get my silver out while I have this out. And there are foils available in the current catalog. We have the brushed metallic silvers, which um, they have a really pretty one in there that's kind of got a purpley tint to it. That might be uh, an upcoming one of these with some, that would be pretty on the gray too. That's just that little bit of orchidy tint to it. And <clears throat> I did notice yesterday when I was cutting this, let me grab a scrap paper. Um, it wasn't cutting out my, my swirl in a couple areas. So I'm going to put a piece of printer paper in there as a shim. Because I don't feel like fidgeting with these little pieces. I'm going to put this through my cut and emboss. Because I'm using foil paper, and these are out of my scraps, so it's not too bad. But if you can see all the little marks that it made in that foil paper, you can kind of eliminate this by using either um, plates that are in better condition. Mine are very old and scratched up, and I do have some newer ones over there. Or you can take your foil paper. I'll just show you a little trick here. This is going to go back in my, my scrap envelope, so I'm not too worried about it. But if I wanted to smoothen that back out, I could take a piece of <clears throat> printer paper, lay that sheet of foil in there, and put it through my cut and emboss machine a couple times. And that printer paper will help get rid of some of those little marks. I hope it did it and doesn't make a wire out of me. No, actually, it made more. Oh, because I have, um, I printed on this one. But if you use a new piece of paper, it will help take some of those marks out of there. So now that one's going to be textured. Okay, have my wreath. Grab some silver. And I do also try to prevent some of those marks from occurring. I try to cut my foil cardstock only to the size that I'm going to need. You know, if you use a great big sheet and put it through your cut and emboss, then 
you're subjecting that sheet of foil to anything that's on your plate. So my little stems that are kind of like a berry on a stem come from the poinsettia dies. And those coordinate with the poinsettia petals. And this is a set that is currently available <clears throat> in the annual catalog. It was carried over from last year and makes beautiful poinsettias. And honestly, I thought I had one sitting here, but I don't. I was going to show you one of the cards. Maybe we'll do that one next week. Okay, so I need two stems. And I'm only going to cut one out to save time because I already have some ready for us. Oh, and I may as well cut my snowflakes out while I'm here. Okay, so I have a piece of basic gray. And my snowflakes are coming from so many snowflake dyes that coordinate with snowflake wishes. Cute sentiments on this one as well. Snowflake wishes for a Merry Christmas. Thank you, Snow Much. May your season sparkle. Great little fonts. So I need a large snowflake in gray and then a smaller snowflake in basic white. Oops, oh, sorry. Did I, did I hit you in the head? <laughs> sorry. Basic gray. And a basic white. And if I had a little more room on my table, my hubby popped in here last night. I don't know what he was doing. He didn't say anything, but I know what he was thinking. <laughs> oh, this room. I can't even move. But I can't help it. It's, it's November, so I think it's officially um okay to start talking about christmas projects right and a white snowflake okay so that should be it for our die cutting and then from here it's pretty much just putting our card together oh we have to do our greeting huh? so i guess we do have another important step here yeah so i'm working on uh christmas gifts Still working on stuff for the maker's market. Um, a little bit of everything here and there. And I have my pokey tool over here, but I, I don't want to um, make little pokey marks on my wreath. So I'm just using a, a dull pencil to pop my wreath out. Sure, we are. I might have to use the pokey tool. This is pretty dull. Oh. I, wanna, I was afraid of making marks in the foil, but there we go. Use the right tool for the job and it will work better. And then here is our wreath. Pop the extra bits out. Yep, that little shim helped tremendously. I had one, um, I think it was this one, just was giving me a hard time cutting. Oh, like that one. That little one right there didn't cut the whole way through. Why is that? I don't want to tear my foil, so I'm just going to use an, a little knife here and trim around that. There we go. That's better. The metallic paper has sort of... Um, a paper backing on it and if you're not careful and you start to rip it you can rip the paper backing which then might distort your your foil paper so I, I do try to take a little bit of care with that okay basic gray I'm not going to glue anything down yet because I'm going to put my greeting on here but I kind of want to lay out my design 
so that I know where my greeting will fit on the front of the card. You can use whatever berries and stems that you have. As a matter of fact, I think in that um, that current stamp and die set, there are some branches in there. There are also some in Merriest Moments and Christmas Season. They have they all have some pine leaves and needles. You don't have to use berries if you don't want to. You could use leaves. Okay, and my snowflake will go here. So this tells me how far down I need to put my greeting. And I'm using Merry Christmas from the Poinsettia Petals set. Uh, I had, oh, there it is, my embossing buddy. And this <clears throat> is just an anti-static powder to help your embossing powder not stick to the spots that you don't want it to. And I almost put, here's another tip, I almost put lotion on my hands today because they're really dry. But if you use lotion before you start crafting on your cards, it could leave oily stains on your cardstock. So um, if that were the case, then my embossing powder might stick to that as well as it's staining my cardstock. All right. And Versamark ink. Merry Christmas. This did work much better after I re-inked it. So that could have been my problem last week. I see a little piece of cardstock stuck on there. That won't do. Excuse me. Try to line that up nice and straight. Give a nice firm press. Remember, you don't have to press hard, just firm. Don't want to rock it because you'll leave an outline. And then I'll take my embossing powder over a scrap of paper get rid of these little guys right now. Tap off my excess. Put that a little bit to the right. Oh, well, maybe we'll just add an extra rhinestone down there to offset that difference. Huh? And then I'm going to heat up my um, heat gun here. And so I'm going to apologize right now for the noise that it's going to make. And then I'll bring it up here so we can watch the embossing powder change. And you'll notice that when I do this, I'm going to keep my warmed heat gun over a section of my stamped image until I can see the embossing powder start to go smooth and then I'm going to move along. I'm not going to stay hovered over that area because you can melt the powder into the paper and it'll start looking all bumpy. Uh, if you have any embossing powder that is in areas that you don't want, you can just use a small paintbrush and wipe away any excess, but the embossing buddy really helps prevent that a lot. So it doesn't take long to heat this up, but it does work much better if your uh, gun is already warmed when you bring it to the paper.
and that's it. And you can see how shiny it turned that powder. Just a reminder now this embossing powder is still a little bit uh, touchy so we're going to set it aside and let it cool for a minute here. In the meantime, I will get all of my little bits ready here. And my card base. I had extra bits I'll cut out today. If your paper is warped a little bit and you're concerned about that lying flat on your card base, you can always use double-sided tape. And this will help to keep it laying down flat. I'm just going to use my liquid glue. I still like using um, the liquid glue because it gives you just a second or two to get your paper um, fidgeted around there so that it's nice and straight. Remember, you don't need a lot. You don't want to make your card front bumpy. And this adheres really well, so you know, it doesn't take a whole bunch. And we'll line that up. And then I'm just going to use my reverse tweezers to hold this while I add a little bit of glue to the back because if I get little dots of glue on the front of the foil, it, it will make little dull spots. So again, I'm only going to add little dots. Once it starts coming out, and it'll probably come out in a big glob. Come on. No, I don't want a big glob. Or I just want teeny tiny bits. So I don't want it to ooze out and then get on the foil. Oh, see? Like that came out in a big glob. Where's my silicone mat that I have out here? There. So I'm just going to dab that off because I don't want my foil to be yucky. These silicone mats are really handy because once the glue dries, it will just wash or, or peel right off. I'm trying to be careful because this is, I finally opened a new bottle of Tombow. So now when I squeeze it, I, I do get like big tons of glue that comes out and I don't want that. And whine like a baby. Oh. Okay, I think that's gonna do it. And then we'll do the same with our little stems. Now, yesterday when I did this, I dropped the one little berry sprig. I think I dropped it like three times. That's when I decided that I was just going to use my tweezers for um, holding these. Let me think I could do a better job. So this card, I think, goes a little bit faster, only because we're not taking out all the different stamps and inks and everything in between. But of course, as I said, 
you can definitely stamp your greeting on the front, cut all of these pieces just from cardstock. It will look just as pretty. Oh, so what I meant to print out and forgot to tell you even, oh my goodness. So <clears throat> this is gonna be kind of a story. So I don't know if I'm gonna do a Friday Live next week because next week is our Stampin' Ups on stage. And this on stage event is an annual event they have for demonstrators and our team. I don't have a team, but now would be a wonderful time for you to join Stampin' Up! as part of my group because you can join Stampin' Up! for $75 through November. This is regularly $99, and you get all of the same perks as the $99 registration, but you get it for $75. And that is, I think it's $125 in products. See, this is why I wanted to print it out. Um, you get to pick out of the catalog um, a paper pumpkin kit is included in that. And I don't remember everything. Shame on me. I know. I'm sorry. I should. I really didn't mean to print that. But this is their. Um, Ooh, what am I doing? I want to put this only in the middle because I'm going to offset my snowflake petals here. Wipe that off on here. I only want this to be in the middle of the gray snowflake because I was going to put dimensionals on this one. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> yeah, so during our onstage event, which is virtual again this year, I'm kind of sad about that. I only got to go to one live one before quarantines. Again, pandemic just ruined fun. But anyways, um, all the members of our team can also register for this event. And we had the opportunity to, you always can order the swag bag that goes with um, the year's event. And in that bag, you get some of the new products out of the 2022 catalog, which we tend to forget is right around the corner. So we've already got the new stamp set, one of the new stamp sets to use, and um, pretty papers and stuff, which we can't share. Yet because these are not available, of course. We're still going to get some instructions and ideas on great ways to use these products. I think I like that with the dimensional better. And then I'm just going to add a couple of rhinestones here to the front. And I think I will put one down here that's going to help not make my off-centeredness looks so noticeable. Yeah, so for $75, you can join my Stampin' Up! team. And if this does sound like something that you're interested in, I will get you all the details. Of what's included with the startup kit. Um, I don't like that you can see my dimensional. That's bugging me. Hopefully that's hidden a little bit better. Pretty, pretty. I think I just heard my cat make a meow down there. 
that's really a very pretty card. And then, like I said, you can do another one with um, greens, even. These little holly berries were from, oh, what are these called? These were full tidings, glitter dots from last year. And actually, full tidings has a wreath as well. But I think that this wreath was the most similar to the um, to the, the set that I showed you, the seasonal swirls. This is actually so close to it that um, I wanted to use that one instead. Because I almost did go get my full tidings out of the box there and use that for it. But I think it's got a little bit more detail in the wreath. So I wanted to share something that was closest to what you have available. I don't, let me see if I can quickly, while you just sit and admire that beautiful card, I'm going to see if I can grab that, um, yep, yeah, on stage at home. Oh, so anyways, yeah, on stage at home. So it lasts like, we're going to, log in on Wednesday to make sure that we can connect and everything. And then Thursday, the event begins with recognition of um, outstanding demonstrators. And I know last year they had a wonderful show for us. I think um, it was Pat Benatar and she was amazing. It was so good. Um, and then, and then throughout the next, couple of days we have breakout sessions and we'll be doing craft alongs with with the Stampin' Up! teams that share ideas and how to use some of the new products that are coming out in the catalog. So I'll have all my papers and everything cut out. That's why I'm just not sure I'm going to squeeze in a Friday thing as well. And let's see here. I know I kept that out. Oh, let's just go to the site. <sighs> Stampin up. Log in. I think I'm using all of my internet, ooh, all of my internet power here. And go. And, um, let's see. <sighs> Seasonal sales, not that one. I want to offer everything that is in. Oh, recruiting. I don't know. I will just, uh, shame on me. I should have had this all ready to go, but I didn't. Oh, is that it? Yeah, I found it. So usually this is $99 and it is $75 now through the end of November. Okay. Oh, and it just started yesterday. I was thinking it started the third. It started on the 4th, and so you get um, $125 worth of product, and it still doesn't tell you everything on this one. I'm going to put it on my web page. That's going to be the easiest thing instead of 
having you sit here and just wait for me to figure this out because I don't remember. I read it and I was thinking I need to print this for Friday and then I didn't print it. So I apologize. So in the meantime, go make a shiny wreath Christmas card or if you don't have shiny, make a wreath Christmas card and have a great weekend. Go to my website. I will put the information on there for you. So if you want to earn a little extra cash or maybe get some uh, stamping products at a discount, join a Stampin' Up! is really a good way to do that. I, I really enjoy my discounts that I earn from there. You do not have to promote. You don't have to do um, workshops. You don't have to do videos. You don't have to do any of that. There is a quarterly requirement that you need to um, maintain to qualify and to keep your status you can um, you can increase your level and get more rewards and more discount for every step that you take and if you're interested in that just let me know because i would love to start a team with you i would love to have someone to stamp with me and and the ladies who have come and done my workshops always have a good time so you know, we could we could do something like that on a more regular basis, but I'd love to have somebody help me do that. Uh, it's way more fun than trying to do it by myself. So get in touch with me. That's Diane at BohoStamper.com. You can email me. And again, I will put all this information on my website and you'll be able to go just see everything that you can you can get with this very special deal through the month of November. And it is a special deal. So have a good weekend, and I will see you on Monday. I will get a video in on Monday on my Facebook channel. So have a great weekend, everyone. Bye.